Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a beautiful and cool summer day. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to create a couple of cards. Um, we're using some new Spellbinders items, some 3D embossing folders, and a new die set. The die set is the Spellbinders Modern, Spellbinder Essential Modern Ovals. It's a 12-piece nesting set. And then there's some 3D embossing folders that are so pretty. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorites. This has some beautiful circles in there, and then inside the circle is a flower. This is the um, Mandala Blooms. So pretty. And then this one's just as pretty. It has some beautiful florals. It's called the Floral and Vine 3D embossing folder. I thought we would um, mix and match these to create a couple of cards. So we're going to start by... Um, we'll emboss first. So. Um, I have my both of my embossing folders. We're going to do all of our embossing at once. I have this one. It's pretty easy. This is the floral and vines. I'm just going to take an A2 panel and run this through my die cut machine. We'll emboss that. Now this one, I'm going to take an A2 panel and I actually want to create a window with one of the circles that are in this Mandala Blooms um, embossing folder. But if I put it just anywhere, my circle is going to end up just anywhere. So I'm going to find a circle and, and use it as my guide on where I want it in my card. I'll scoot it down a little bit. Am I on the right side? Making sure it's the right side up here. And I think I want a window right here in this section. I don't know if you could tell. Probably not. Maybe a little bit. I want this circle cut out right here. So I'm going to leave this in here as a guide. I'm going to bring in my circle dies. And I'm going to, oh, I'm actually going to create um, a frame with it too. So I'm going to take this circle die that'll cut out one of those mandala circles. And I think that's going to be a perfect window placement. So I'm going to open this up and kind of use my embossing folder as a guide and kind of place it. And I think that'll work out great. That circle is right underneath my, my die. And then I will take my, my tape and tape it down. And then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. And then I'll emboss this. Now I ran this through my die cutting machine. We'll put that back. So I have a window, but I'm going to take this panel along with that inside piece and then I'm going to place it. We'll do this. I'm going to line it up over one of those circles. I think that's a good spot. Just want to make sure I center it and then I'll take the inside. I'll just insert it here. So now I know it's strategically placed <laughs> and then I'm going to run this through um, actually I want to straighten it out a little bit there we go you can actually see the circle in there that's covered it perfect but I'm going to run this through my platinum six and I'll be right back so we have our embossing done I'm going to put away my embossing folders and so this has a window with one of those circles cut out. But isn't that such a pretty embossing folder? And then this one is like a perfect um, floral. And there's little loop-de-loops all along the edge. I just love that. And here is our um, florals and vine. Isn't that gorgeous? Really pretty. We're going to actually keep this one white. We're going to work on our first card though here. Now I have um, two pieces of colored cardstock. Um, I'm going to take another circle that's going to fit inside this window. We're going to make a mat on the inside of the window. Um, so I'll take a circle die that's smaller and then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. And then with this one, I'm going to layer the same size circle and then one slightly bigger and I'm going to create a real thin frame. I'll scoot it over as far as I can because I think I can get an oval on this one for our next card. 
Okay, so I, I'm going to run both of these through my die cut machine, and I will be right back. I don't think I mentioned it, but the cardstock that I'm using today is Spellbinders Color Essential Cardstocks. This is Waterfall. This is Peridot. I thought it's some nice summery colors. And then I did die cut out two ovals that layer together of, with the Spellbinders Modern um, Essential Modern Oval die set. This is going to be for our next card, but I thought we would just take care of that. So we have these. I'm not going to actually use this for this card. We're saving it for the next card, but I want to create that a window inside of my card base. So here's my card base. I'm going to line up my embossed panel. I might have to trim a little bit off the bottom, but I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw a circle around it like so. And then I'm going to take that die that we used to cut, to create the frame and the window here. Let's see, it will be this one. I'm going to line it up over my pencil mark to create the same exact window on here as it is in here. This way it's going to go all the way through my card. We're going to create just a different kind of a card today. So now we have a window in our card base and I have my panel here. They will line up beautifully nice and clean on the inside. But I do want to add a matte piece of colored cardstock on the inside. So that's where this square comes in. Um, I'm just going to add a little glue around the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to tack this down, matting that on the inside. And then I have my frame that we're going to layer on the outside for a little bit of dimension and a little color. But I think I want to add some color over the flowers on this. So to do that, let me put these back. I want to bring in some oxide inks. I have peacock feathers and I have mowed lawn and then I have my blending brushes. And I also purchased a new gadget. Actually, a couple of them I thought I would share with you. So I know you guys are going to ask, so I thought I would share with you what I'm using. These are for inks. They're silicone mats for inks. They're very super thin. They're from Waffle Flower. Um, I got one for my rectangle, um, my rectangle silicone. But it what it does since I have a glass mat. Um, it's not going to go nowhere. So neat. And I can actually use this for watercoloring too. So um, I picked these up in the, in the rectangle for my rectangle ink pads. And then I got a square one for my oxides. So these are available at Waffle Flower. I'll link them down below. Usually I use a silicone mat. These are from Waffle Flowers. Um, I'll leave the links down below in case you guys are, want to check it out. Um, but I thought it'd be perfect because it, the, since this is glass, it doesn't shift. And usually I use my little silicone mat, which works good, but it still, um, it works good, but doesn't look as pretty. Honestly, <laughs> so I'm, I went for the pretty. So I have my oxide inks that will fit perfectly in here and I know they're not gonna shift and I can use one hand too. So I'm super excited about that. So Waffle Flower has these. Okay, let's we'll remove, remove the caps here. And I'm gonna start on our panel here. We have our florals that are inside of our mandalas. I'm gonna ink up my Spellbinder blending brush here and I'm going to lightly go over the top of the floral really carefully. I just think this looks so pretty and it's so easy to go over and it's not going over in the the other parts since it's 3D it's really these flowers really stand out. Let me show you as soon as I'm done here. To me, that is gorgeous. Isn't that so pretty? 
I, just, I could stop there and be really happy because I think that looks gorgeous. But of course I gotta keep going. <laughs> I have my Mowed Lawn blending brush and I'm gonna combine my peacock feathers and my Mowed Lawn. So we have two different colors. Let me show you. I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go over both of these just slightly just so we don't have one color and we can mix and match it. I think that looks really soft and pretty. Gorgeous. And you know what, while we're at it, since we have our inks out, I have this circle that we, that came from in here. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. But I'm going to put the green around the edge and use more blue. Let's put green around the edge. That looks really pretty. And I'll add a little green to our flower too. So this is really pretty too. Let me show you. Maybe add a little bit more blue, huh? Here we go. So I think that looks really pretty. So we'll put this off to the side. We're gonna put our inks away with our handy little tool. Now I'm gonna take this panel and I'm gonna add some glue behind it and then I'm gonna layer it on my card base. And I'll just use my tape runner for this. For adhering background panels, this really does work. There's lots of tape in here, but for like everyday putting together, um, I use this tape runner. This tape runner lasts me forever, and I love that it's removable. Um, this, once it's down, is not removable, unfortunately. So if you see me using two tape runners, that's why. <laughs> this really does secure my background panels to my card base. I'll go ahead and layer that over the window. Believe it or not, there's not gonna be any dimension on this card, which is kind of a shock, because usually I always have dimension. <laughs> so it's actually, gonna fit in the envelope beautifully. I'm gonna leave this closed and I'll bring in my sentiment stamp. Again, this is the Spellbinder Sealed Sentiments. And the items that I'm using today is part of a new collection at Spellbinders that's called Sealed for Summer. We're gonna use a little message to say dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna just use an acrylic block and I'm gonna use my memento ink because I don't want it to smear. If I use my VersaFine, usually I always smear it. And since this is on the inside of my card base, I'm gonna just go ahead. You could use your stamping positioner, but I'm gonna stamp a little message to say right inside that window. And I love this. And then when you open it up, it's on the inside. You have that little window. And on the inside, we're gonna stamp. Have a wonderful day. So when you open it up, you have a continued message. Have a wonderful day. Okay, now, one last thing before we start our next card. I'm gonna bring in some, um, I wanna bring in a contrasting color to my blues and greens. And for me, I'm gonna use my Spellbinders Color Essential Gems. This, these are the red ones. And I'm gonna use the itty bitties and I'm gonna put them in the center of the flowers that we ink blended on. To adhere these itty bitty gems to the center of these flowers, um, usually what I use is my tool in one, which works fabulous. But um, 
I found a new way. This is my jewel picker. It's a wax jewel picker. This is the one I usually use. And um, you can see it's well loved. It used to be pointed. <laughs> this doesn't have any refills. And if on the opposite end, it's not a craft pick. It's actually like a cylinder. It still works and comes in handy, but I don't use it very often. So I was on Amazon and I picked the, this one up. It was pretty inexpensive. And you know what's nice is that the end is a craft pick. It has that beautiful um, gem cylinder in there. And then this side has the wax tip and it's re there's refills for this too. I'll link them down below in case you guys want a pretty craft tool. I didn't need it. You know, it's it was a it was a want more than a need <laughs> because I I these two will work perfectly fine together, but in case you guys are wondering where I got this one at, it's on Amazon and I'll link it below. But I'm mentioning that because the new way to pick up these little itty bitties is with your gem picker upper. Makes it so easy. Oh my goodness. You just kind of slide it and it picks it up beautifully. Let me show you. Let me zoom in. So you just kind of pick it up and slide and then you can adhere them to the center of your flowers or on anywhere on your card base. And it just works beautifully. Actually, I can adhere these in half the time that it would take with my tool in one because my tool in one I had a tendency to pick down and it would some of them would flip up so this works fabulous so break out your jewel picker upper and use these for your um, you could probably use this for enamel dots too don't quote me on that but you probably could so we have some red gems for a little bit of contrast on those flowers. And I'm thinking about bringing in some clear for these little itty bitty flowers. Let's do one and see how it looks. I'm gonna use my silver mix. Do I have enough? Yeah. And let's see if we can keep those flowers neutral but add a little shine to them. I think I'll do that. I'm going to take my silver mix and I'm going to add some of these smaller gems to the center of each one of those smaller flowers. For my, oops, let's zoom back out. For my next card, we have our beautiful embossed panel, but I'm gonna keep this soft and white, and I'm gonna adhere it to my A2 size card base. Now we have our ovals, our essential modern ovals. I'm, I thought this circle would fit perfectly on here. Okay, but I wanna stamp my sentiment in here. I think I'm gonna heat emboss with some white embossing powder. So I'm gonna treat my Peridot cardstock on the very bottom. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, you light up my day. I think that's really pretty. I'm going to use my Versamarking. And then I'm going to go over this with white embossing powder. And I'll heat, I'll use my heat gun and we'll melt this. Okay, we have our sentiment heat embossed and it really stands out against that Peridot cardstock. I'm going to layer both of these together and then we'll pop up this and place it on our, our panel here. I'm going to add a foam square behind here. Before I add this, I'm going to line this up on my card base. I'm actually going to end up trimming the bottom half off here. So let's add some adhesive. And I will line it up. Wonderful. And I'm going to use my scissors and we'll trim off what's overhanging. 
So I trimmed this off, and originally this was how my card plan was going to go. I was going to call this done, but I think this is just too much open space. So I placed this up here, and I thought if I raise this up, I think that looks really neat. I kind of like the way this looks, um, but my sentiment is too low. So I'm going to die cut out a... A, a waterfall and a peridot cardstock one more time with my modern essential ovals and I'm going to stamp my sentiment a little higher this time. Okay, so I went ahead and heat embossed this time a lot closer to the very top here. Now to fix this, very easy, we're going to remove this I'm going to add some adhesive. We will tack this down. And then we will tack this down up here. Like so. And then I will just use my scissors and trim away the excess. And then if you wanted to use these for another card, you could because you're going to have two leftovers. And I think that just looks a little, diff little different. Sometimes a little different is nice. And then I have these two pieces we could use. We could actually make another card if we wanted to use these. We could. So I didn't, you don't have to necessarily waste your mess ups, which is really nice. So I'll put these off to the side and we will call this card good. So these are the two projects that I made today using a couple new items from Spellbinders. Um, we have the Spellbinders new essential modern ovals which we kind of created a fun almost looks like a little belt this would look good this way too if you want to put your sentiment over here um, something a little bit different and then we have a little window with a continued message on the inside and some fabulous embossing folders so and and then and if you're interested in that gadget that i talked about i'll link it below because i know a few of you are going to ask and also with the new um the silicone mats uh but thanks for joining me have a wonderful day and if thanks for sticking with me till the end i appreciate it so much <laughs> have a great day i have some more fun projects to share with you later on um and coming soon and also before i go i do want to mention if you are new to my channel and you like what you see you like the card making content um click that subscribe button. There's a little bell down there that if you click that, it'll notify you every time I have a new video out. And I would really appreciate that. Have a wonderful day. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.